Hey friends, I'm Tiffany. I'm a surface designer and a small business owner. So today I wanted to discuss 10 things to consider when selling products. So whether you plan on hand making these products yourself, if you want to use a vendor to produce products, or if you plan to go the route of using a print on demand company, there are so many things to consider. So I'm going to list off 10 of the main things to get you started. So the first and probably main thing is what type of products do you want to make and sell? Um, what do you like? What sort of products would you buy? If you as a customer wouldn't buy these products, then chances are other people won't either. Um, what do other people like? What is trending? Um, is your product unique or handmade? Um, how functional or useful is it? And perhaps you might want to start off small in the beginning, but also you want to just consider also what you would like to make in the future as well or down the line. What is your budget? You do want to think about what sort of budget you have to work with. Not everybody has the capital to um, invest in, um, firstly, with products and materials. Um, so perhaps you want to go through the print on demand route because your products are being made as they're ordered and you're not holding um, a large amount of inventory. So that's not something you have to really worry about. Um, but also whatever your budget is might determine what products you can make. Uh, perhaps if your budget is lower, then you want to start off with lower cost items. Um, so that is definitely something to think about. How do you want to sell? So determining how you want to sell your goods, whether it's online, in person, um, at markets, or if you want to sell wholesale, that could determine what you can produce as well. Um, so say, for example, you want to sell online, you can probably sell just about anything. Um, but if you want to sell in person, perhaps you're limited to what you can store, um, the size of the item, the amount of the items. Um, and then if you are considering wholesale, then Price is definitely something you may have to consider and that may, um, you may need to be ordering larger quantities. So again, you're going to have to think about what you can store and what you can keep around um, as inventory. This brings us to whether you can store your inventory. So like I said before, not everybody has the space and the room to store large volumes of inventory. And we're talking more um, if you are having them produced and um, having factories produce these products and then you have to store the inventory or if you're hand making these yourself, you're gonna have to keep around um, an area to produce them, uh, the materials to make them and the product itself. So you have to think about that, but you also want to manage a good amount of inventory um, for you to sell. And also, um, there's things you want to consider. For example, bulk discounts. Um, manufacturers, oftentimes when you order more, the cost per unit is lower. So you save money that way. Or when you're shipping larger amounts, your shipping drastically is cheaper. So those are things you want to consider um, when placing orders for your products. But at the same time, you do have to consider what you can store. Price points, you want to um, have a good idea of what you would like to sell your product for. And that may take some research. Um, it's a good idea to possibly compare other similar items that are out there already in the marketplace. Um, get a feel for the medium price, but make sure you are covering your costs and that includes the materials, um, any shipping costs and duties, in packaging materials and labor. So keeping in mind all that, um, a good rule of thumb is um, that your cost price, multiply that by four, would be your selling price retail. Um, and then if you want to go into wholesale, then you want to take your cost price and multiply that by two and that would be a possible wholesale price. So just getting an idea of those figures and the numbers, that's really important. Finding vendors. So this is going to be a big one um, and it applies whether you are making your own product 
um, finding someone to manufacture your product or finding a print on demand company um, because you want to make sure you're working with the right suppliers and um, there's a few ways or a few things to consider um, one I would definitely want to make sure that they're a credible um, vendor that they're reputable um, things you know that I'm going to look at is their website look at their background information their history um, see who they've worked with if there's reviews that's great um, kind of see how many years they've been working in this industry um, and if it was a referral from someone that you know who have used them personally then that's even better um, but you definitely want to look into them um, beforehand some other things you might want to consider is their um, customer service so how do they respond to things when you know they need to be fixed um, so how do they communicate with their customers because this is going to affect your customers directly too if say um, a product was not acceptable or was sent broken or damaged how are they going to handle that because you're going to have to relay that to your customer um, so yeah you want to make sure the customer service is good um, and that also kind of brings me to communication which is very important um, so there's a lot of details to discuss with your vendor um, so you want to make sure that you have good clear communication with them um, and that includes not just um, language but how they contact you how they communicate um, are things clear when you are speaking with them do you have to repeat yourself a lot um, like those are things that matter to me because that's also time you're using to explain extra and to communicate things you need. So you wanna make sure you know they know exactly what you need, what you want, and how you want it done. And if there's any problems, you wanna make sure they clearly understand those problems and know how to get those fixed. Um, and also like things like if they take you know several days or a week to respond to an email, that's not great. And you don't have the time to waste on people who you cannot even get in contact with um, when you need them. So communication, I would say, is very important too. Something else I look at is their product line, just uh, like a heads up in the future, because if this is a, it turns out to be a good vendor and you know things are working well with them, their products are great, then at least I have an idea if I want to expand my product line, then I already have a vendor set here that can do that. Um, obviously the quality of the product has to be good and for any um, say if you are ordering materials to make your products you're looking at print on demand or manufacturer you always want to order samples um, samples are so important to check the quality check the size and just to make sure everything is good before you go and order more um, larger amounts of it obviously um, so you definitely want to check the quality of the product and that's probably the best way to do that. Um, you also want to consider how the product is shipped to you. So say you're ordering a sample, how are these vendors shipping you the product? Are they coming in, you know, broken or messy? Um, you know, because that's going to affect, say if you're doing a print on demand company, that's going directly to your customer. So you're not going to be able to see that product and that could reflect badly on your business. And of course their prices, you want to compare the prices that they're offering you and what other vendors may be offering you as well. Um, I don't think it's always going to be, you know, you find one vendor and that's going to be it. It's always a good idea to compare with other vendors and you can negotiate um, oftentimes as well. So for me, it helps me to make a spreadsheet um, of all the different information so I can just clearly see, you know, um, what each vendor is offering and then make my decision based on that. Um, so you want to consider their price of the product, their shipping cost, their customs and duty fees, if that applies to you. Um, any additional fees or expenses that they're charging you perhaps for packaging um, or anything like that. Um, that's all going to be 
involved in the cost. So make sure you note all of that. And packaging. And when I'm, I'm not talking about from the vendor, but I'm talking about how you want to present your shipping and your packaging to your customers. Um, you know, it's always fun to look at packaging ideas. Um, you want to make little hang tags and stuff like that to make it look pretty, but you also have to be practical and think about the cost of that packaging because every little bit is going to add up and that's going to go into your total cost of your product. Um, so uh, think about how you want to package the item to make it presentable. But also, how are you shipping? So now, you know, a lot of orders are being done online. There's so many online stores now, that's the way to go. Um, so you have to think about how you want to ship these out to the customers, what size boxes you want to use. Um, you're going to need fillers or um, packaging materials, tape, um, if you want to do custom branding and packaging, um, tape or tissue paper. There's so many ways you can enhance your packaging and add to your packaging. Um, so there's lots to look through, but again, you're going to have to consider your costs and what you can, or think about what makes the most sense to use for your packaging. Um, also the items you sell is going to impact that because if you are mostly selling large products or fragile products, then you're looking at larger boxes, um, more um, bubble wrap and, and paper to protect the item. Um, so that's going to be extra cost. And then that's adding to the weight and the size of the package, which is going to increase your shipping. So, and it's that shipping cost is either coming out of you or from your customer. So, you know, that can affect a lot of things. So keep in mind, your packaging. <laughs> what e-commerce platform do you want to use? Um, so I think it's pretty evident that having an online presence and a store online is pretty important nowadays. Um, so you want to think about what platform you want to use. So I currently use Shopify and I have been using Shopify um, for a few years now and I love it and I've had nothing but positive experiences with it. Um, their customer service is great. It's very easy and user-friendly. Um, so I'm sticking with Shopify um, for now. I have used WooCommerce that works with WordPress and I've also um, used the Etsy platform. Um, and I know that there are lots of features that you can add to different website um, platforms. So you can easily add like a shopping cart to your website um, so there's lots of different platforms to use, but you want to use the one that's good for you, um, price points that work for you, um, because most of them do have a monthly fee, um, how easy it is for you to use, uh, because e-commerce, having an e-commerce site is can get complicated, so you want to make sure you know how to use it, um, and just, yeah, find the one that works for you. Where do you want to sell? And I'm talking countries and locations. So I am based in Canada. So I'm currently selling within Canada and the United States because um, for me, that's the two countries that's easiest for me to ship my products to right now. Um, so you wanna think if you wanna ship internationally, and of course that depends on where you live, but there's things to consider when you're shipping outside your own country. So you, there's um, international shipping costs, um, custom fees that might, um, you know, be added, um, foreign taxes, um, and things like that. So decide where you want to ship, and if it is outside your own country, um, you're going to want to do a little more research. And one last thing, but it's also a big thing, and it's probably um a whole beast of its own and that's marketing so you you know yes marketing is a whole nother thing you have to worry about but you do want to think about if your product is even marketable um so what do you want to do maybe have um you know open a new social media account um what kind of ads you can do what kind of promotions or collaborations um 
you might be able to do. So you want to think about that because if you are struggling um, on ways to market your product, then maybe that's not the right product because then it's not marketable. Um, you know, think about that because that's going to come into play definitely huge um, when all this stuff is done. So there you have it, 10 things you should consider when selling your own products. Um, it's a big deal and it's a big thing for you to start to do this. So good luck with it and I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.